Everybody said, Amen. I welcome everyone tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. I pray that our hearts will thirst after God and He'll load us with His blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's close our eyes for prayer. Father, we thank you and bless your name. Thank you for the thirst, the passion, the desire, the longing you have given our hearts. Thank you for bringing us every Saturday here for the workers' training. And thank you for all our brethren, brothers and sisters, young and old, in all the places we are gathered together. We are praying, O oh Lord, as you have promised, you bless all your people tonight in Jesus' name. Satisfy the longing of every heart. We thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're reading from Psalm 42. And I'm reading from verse 1. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Here is a psalmist telling the Lord personally that as the heart, as that animal, runs after, longs after, and desires the water because it's very thirsty. It says, so my soul panteth after thee, O God. He wanted something from God, something spiritual, something physical, something for the wisdom and the power and the knowledge to rule the nation. And it says, my heart is panting after you. It says in verse 2, my soul thirsted for God. It says, although I have the things of the world, the place, the position, and the property and everything, yet there is something that all this world cannot offer. And because of that, my very soul is panting after God, and I'm thirsty for him, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? As you look at Psalm 61, Psalm 61, reading from verses 1 and 2. It says in Psalm 61, verse 1, Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. It says it's not just a silent passion. It's not just something quiet within me. Some people will say, yes, I thirst after God, but I keep it under check. I keep it under control. I don't want to voice it out. I know what I'm meditating on in my heart. But the man said, it's my cry. It's my calling. It's my passion. And I'm really going out for God. He says, attend unto my prayer. Verse 2, it says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. Understanding that this is a king, understanding that this is the highest uh, uh, position that he held in the whole nation. And yet he said, apart from all that, my heart is still seeking you know, after God from the ends of the earth. Wherever I find myself, I will cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed. Here is the reason is passionate about it. Here is the reason is a panting after God. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. If you could say that in your heart, that you know there's still a higher level, a higher experience, something greater than what you have got, and you are telling the Lord, and you are telling the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, you are telling the Lord, and you are crying unto the Lord about it, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. He follows that up in Psalm 63. He says in Psalm 63, O God, thou art my God. He said, my punching is not because I'm backsliding. My seeking you is not because I am backsliding. I still have the witness of the Spirit in my heart. I'm a child of God. Thou art my God. Early will I see thee. Are you so busy in your life that you say, I don't have time for quiet time, fellowship with God? We are talking about David here. If you look at the title of the psalm, it's the psalm of David, a king. Many battles to fight. 
many things to look into and yet it says early will i seek thee early in the morning will i seek thee early in my life will i seek thee early in my profession will i seek thee early in the ministry will i seek thee my soul thirsted for thee my flesh longed for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is he goes on in verse 2 to see thy power and thy glory it says the reason i'm seeking after you and the reason i'm panting the reason i'm longing the reason I, I want to see more of you is that i want to see your power in every area of my life i want to see your power in every area of ministry i want to see your power and thy glory so as i have seen thee in the sanctuary it tells us in verse 3 because that loving kindness is better than life my leaves shall praise thee thus will i bless thee while i live it says while i live i don't have any plan going back sliding back forgetting you while i'm alive i'm going to keep on seeking your blessing and i'll keep on seeking thee i will lift up my hands in thy name my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness it says i'm seeking this not for the physical i'm seeking this not for my body i'm seeking this for my soul and i know my soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness and my mouth shall praise thee with his joyful lips i pray that that will be a testimony in jesus name look at psalm 64 reading from verse 2 psalms 84 84 psalm 84 i'm reading from verse 2 it says my soul longeth yea even fainteth for the courts of the lord it says yes i can worship in my house i can worship you from the edge of the earth i can call upon you anywhere anytime and yet it says there is something that i need in the courts of the house of the lord he says there's something the fellowship of the people of god in the house of god in the house of prayer in the house in the sanctuary of the lord there's something i get there i cannot get privately in my own corner in my own chamber my soul longeth yea even fainteth for the courts of the lord my heart and my flesh cries out for the living God. We are not serving a dead God, we are serving a living God. The idols of the people are dead gods. And it says, I've abandoned all that, I've thrown them away. If I see anyone near, I'll burn them with fire. Because my heart crying out is crying out to the, for the living God. It says, Yea, the sparrow has found a house and the swallow a nest for herself it says the birds have a shelter the animals have their shelter but me the shelter i can find is the shelter of the protection of god of the umbrella of god of the shadow of god of the power of god it says because of that since these animals have and they lay their youngs even at thine altar O lord of hosts my king and my god blessed are they that dwell in thy house blessed are they that dwell in thy house it says i might come in and then move out come in on the day of worship and then go out for warfare and go out for my business and go out for what i need to do in life and yet i live my life as if my soul my heart my mind my desires my ambition everything is in the house of god it says what i learned in the house of god 
when I get to the place of my business, when I get to the marketplace, when I get to my community, I don't forget it. I don't forget. It is like I'm living continually. I'm living perpetually in the very house of God. It says, blessed are they that dwell, that abide, that, that have their pilgrimage and their sojourning in thy house. They will still be praising thee. That means they praise you when they are in their house. They praise you when they are in the marketplace. They praise you when they are in their community. They praise you when they are alone by themselves. As if they were still in your house physically. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. When you have that inexhaustible strength of the Lord, and that inexhaustible flow of the power of God, it says how blessed you are. Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, whose heart are the ways of them who passing through, passing through the valley of Baker, make it a well, and the rain also fills the pools. Look at this. They go from strength to strength. Those who are longing after God, they go from strength to strength. Those who are panting after the Almighty God, they go from strength to strength. Those who live their lives as if every moment they abide and they dwell in the house of God. It says such people, they go from strength to strength. Those who hear the word in the church and at home, any, everywhere they go, they will be going from strength to strength. Those who lift up their prayers unto God every moment, any challenge they have, the lifting of their cry unto the Lord, it says they go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appears before God. I pray this will be true for everyone. I said it will be true for everyone. That you'll go from strength to strength, from power to power, and from grace to grace, from faith to faith, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Tonight, we're looking at the message, Satisfying Thirsty Souls in a Dry Land. Satisfying Thirsty Souls in a Dry Land. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. Are you thirsty? You'll pant, you'll have passion, you're thirsty for God, for experiences in the Lord, for spiritual things in the Lord, and your heart is desiring, and you want to have more of God, there'll be panting, there'll be longing, there'll be desire, there will be prayer, there'll be passion. The passion or the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. Point number two, the prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. You're thirsty, and you know it's only from God you can have your thirst satisfied. There will be prayer, there will be praise, and you'll be trusting the Lord. You know that what you are asking for, to satisfy your soul, satisfy your longing, and to satisfy your spiritual desire. You want to go higher in the Lord, further in the Lord, stronger in the Lord. You are trusting the Lord. It will happen. It will happen in Jesus' name. The prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Point number three, the priority. If you really have the longing, if you really have the passion, if you really have the desire, you will make it a priority in your life. It will, be, it will come to the front burner. It will come to the first number one in the list of your desires. You desire material things, physical things, domestic things. You desire some mental things. You desire some things in the community. But if you are really punching after God, designing after God, longing after God, 
there will be number one, which will be spiritual, the priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. The priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. Number one, the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. Number two, the prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Number three, the priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. Point number one, the panting and the passion of a thirsty soul. We're coming back to Psalm 42. In Psalm 42, we're reading from verse 1. And here we see the expression of the panting and the passion of his soul that is thirsty before God. It says in verse 1, As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And you know the heart is panting after the water brooks. Number one, by going in the direction of the water brooks. I will not go up a tree. We'll not go to a desert. We'll not go to a dry place. He has located the water brooks and is going in that direction. How do you know that the heart is panting and longing because it's not walking slowly, it's not going sluggishly, it's actually running, galloping, and going without any distraction. How do you know that a heart is panting you know, after the water brooks? When he gets to the water brooks, he doesn't look here and there and become a kind of uninterested. He stays there and he drinks the water to the full. How do you know a soul that is panting after God is going in the direction where he can find the word of God, the will of God, the way of God, the grace of God, the power of God, the satisfaction in God is going in that direction. How do you know a soul that is panting after God and thirsty after God is running, literally? It's not a, a person that, you know, is sluggish and lukewarm and lethargic. The service would have started, whatever I meet, I meet. Whatever I miss, I miss. He doesn't have that attitude. He's literally hurrying up to get to the place of the blessing of God so that he loses nothing. And the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. And you recognize a person that is his soul is thirsty and panting you know, after God when he gets to the place when God will bless him. Like the heart gets to the water brooks, he stays there. He's patient there. He's rested there. He's seeking the Lord there. He wants everything there. He's not distracted by anything. His heart is lying. Everything is God. He's there and he's saying, Oh Lord, today I want more of you. Whatever I've got, I want more of that. Whatever I've got, I want more of you. As the heart panteth after the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. My soul thirsteth for God. My soul thirsteth for God. And everything that belongs to God, I want to get to him, to heaven, when I die. My soul, my heart, my mind, Panted for God, for the living God. When shall I come and appear before God? Tells us in Psalm 143. Psalm 143. Reading from verse 6. Psalm 143, verse 6. The Psalm of David. I stretch forth my hands unto thee. My soul thirsteth after thee as a thirsty land. My soul thirsteth after thee. As you examine your life and you see what your neighbors are running after, 
they run out of money they run out of position in the world they run out of property landed property they run after going there and going there they run after silver and gold they run after what they think will make their life comfortable and then many people as they do that the higher they go in the world the faster they go in the world the lower they go in the things of god and they reserve and then they come back they're retreating they're getting less but now he says i stretch forth my hands unto thee my soul is thirsty after thee as a thirsty land hear me speedily O lord my spirit faileth hide not thy face from me it says i long for fellowship your own fellowship i long for intimacy intimacy with the almighty god hide not thy face from me lest i be like unto them that go down into the pit cause me to hear thy loving kindness in the morning for in thee do i trust in thee do i trust cause me to know the way wherein i should walk says that's why i pant after you that's why i thirst after you i do not know the way the way to your destination and the way for your head uh, to your death to my destiny that you have ordained for me only you know that way that destiny and that thing you have planned for me because i don't know that's why i long i desire i pant i pray i want to know the way wherein i should walk for i lift up my soul unto thee i lift up my soul unto thee isaiah chapter 44 what are we panting after what are we longing after what are we desirous for what are we praying for what are we looking for I say chapter 44 reading from verse 3 I say chapter 44 reading from verse 3 for I will pour water upon him that is thirsty that's the promise of God it says he himself will pour the refreshing water the reviving water the cleansing water upon him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground i will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing upon thy offspring it starts by talking about water the water that refreshes us the water that renews us the water that revives us the water that cleanses us and i am most son and he says i'm talking about the spirit the holy spirit upon us to be born of god born of the spirit to be sanctified sanctified by the spirit to be baptized and to be filled and to be immersed and to be empowered by the spirit to be renewed by the spirit to be revived by the spirit i will pour my spirit upon thy seed the people who thirst and the people who long after god and it says i'll pour my blessing upon thy offspring verse 4 and they shall spring up as among the grass as willows by the water courses one shall say I am the Lord. Your testimony will be clear. You say, I am of the Lord. Another shall call himself by the name of Jacob. Another shall subscribe with his hand unto the Lord. And so name himself by the name of Israel. 
I pray that will be true for you in Jesus' name. Psalm 55, verse 1. 55, verse 1. Oh, everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. In the plural. Everyone that thirsts, come ye to the waters. The water of life. Come ye to the waters, the water of strength. Come ye to the waters, the water of the Spirit. Come ye to the waters, the water of the Word, whereby we are cleansed and sanctified. Come ye to the waters, he that has no money. Come ye, buy and eat. Ye come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. He invites us to come. He invites us to seek, invites us to buy, he invites us to pray, he invites us to seek his face. And then he tells us in verse 12, For ye shall go out with joy, and be led forth with peace. Well, have peace, and peace that passes understanding in Jesus' name. That's why we're panting after him. That's why we're seeking him. That's why we're longing after him. When there's confusion or commotion, when there's sorrow or sadness, and you want him to give you peace that the world cannot give, you want him to give you joy and happiness. You want him to give you satisfaction in life. He says, he shall go out with joy. Amen. And be led forth with peace. Amen. And the mountains... And the hills shall break forth before you into singing. And all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Chapter 48 of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 48. I'm reading from verse 18. Oh, that thou art akind unto my commandments then at thy peace being as a river and a righteousness as the waves of the sea that's why we're seeking the lord so that our peace will multiply your peace will multiply peace in your heart peace in your soul peace at home peace in your neighborhood Peace in your community. Peace in the place of work. Peace in your family in Jesus' name. And your righteousness as the waves of the sea. Righteousness will multiply and be deep and be great and be high in Jesus' name. Look at verse 21. And he thirsted not when he led them through the desert you'll never go through a wilderness without abundant supply in jesus name he caused the waters to flow out of the rock for them he claimed the rock also and the waters gushed out that experience will come back again it's in isaiah chapter 41 reading from verse 17 isaiah Chapter 41, reading from verse 17. In verse 17, when the poor and the needy seek water, and there is none, and their tongue faileth for thirst, I, the Lord, will hear them. He'll do that tonight. You'll be longing and panting and desiring, and you have not got enough of what you are seeking. Tonight is a night of blessing, a night of outpouring, and a night when the Lord will satisfy everyone in Jesus' name. I, the God of Israel, will not forsake them. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water. 
and the dry land springs of water. I will plant in the wilderness the cedar and cheetah tree and the macho and the oil tree. I will search in the desert the fir tree and, this, and the pine and the box tree together. And now in verse 20, that they may see. I will see tonight. I will have tonight. I will receive tonight. What my heart is longing for, I will have tonight in Jesus' name. Say that for yourself. That they may see and know and consider and understand together that the hand of the Lord has done this. You must have that tonight. Fulfillment tonight in Jesus' name. A pouring of blessing tonight in Jesus' name. And the Holy One of Israel has created it. We're coming to Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 6. Matthew chapter 5. I'm reading from verse 6. In Matthew chapter 5, reading from verse 6, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Tell me what you'll find there. Tell me, tell me. Are you wondering why maybe you don't have the righteousness you have, been heard, you have been hearing about? Have you wondered why you don't have the ideal, the perfect, what you are seeking, what you are looking for, the righteousness? Have you wondered why your righteousness of today is not higher, is not greater, is not purer, is not wider, is not more extensive than the righteousness of yesteryears because there's no thirst because you are not thirsty because you are not hungry it says blessed are they all all of us everyone that hungers and thirsts everyone that pants everyone that desires everyone that is not putting righteousness on the shelf everyone longing everyone passionate about it, everyone praying about it, everyone that says I'm not satisfied, it says blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. Tell me what will follow. Tell me out aloud. For they shall be filled. The righteousness will not be minimal at the lower part of the glass of the cup. The righteousness will not have feel the cup, have feel the heart. The righteousness will be feel, will feel your cup, will feel your heart, will be overflowing in Jesus' name. But you know, it takes thirst. It takes desire. After caring about such righteousness, for your heart to punch at it. And for your heart to desire it so much more than any other sin. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. We shall be filled. We shall be filled. You'll be filled in Jesus' name. Righteousness at home. Righteousness in the heart. Righteousness in the house of God. Righteousness in the place of work, righteousness that is seen and known, righteousness overflowing in our lives in Jesus' name. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. I'm reading from verse 37. In the last day, that great day of the feast, Jesus stood. And Christ saying, Jesus stood and cried, saying, If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. Any man thirst, let him come. 
when we're really thirsty, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. If any man is thirsty, let him come unto me. We'll go to the Lord who is able to satisfy that thirst. Who is able to fill us with the Holy Ghost. Who is able to saturate us with the spiritual gifts. Who is able to make the dry land like a stream of water, a pool of water. If any man thirst, let him come unto me and drink. He that believeth on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Rivers of living water. Rivers, rivers of living water. No part of your life will be dry. Your mind will not be dry. Your soul will not be dry. Your spirit will not be dry. Your heart will not be dry. And even your body will not be dry. Blessing in every compartment of your life. Outpouring in every area of your life. Your soul, your spirit will be refreshed. Your body will recover if you are sick. The blessing of the Lord will flow through every part of your life in Jesus' name. It says, out of his belly shall flow rivers, plural, of living water. But they speak he of the Spirit, which they that believe on him should receive. For the Holy Ghost was not yet given, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Now he's glorified, the Holy Ghost will be given. I said the Holy Ghost will be given. Look at Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Acts chapter 2, verse 33. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted, and having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost, he has shared for this which ye now see and hear. We'll see it in your life. We'll hear about it, your testimony. Outpouring of the Spirit of God upon your life in Jesus' name. You are thirsty? I said you are thirsty? Blessings will come. Revelation chapter 21. Revelation chapter 21. I'm reading from verse 6. And he said unto me, It is done. It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give. Here is the promise. I will give. An unfailing promise, I will give. An infallible promise, I will give. An irreversible promise from the Lord, I will give. Tonight it will happen. I said tonight it will happen. You will not go back home dry. You'll not go back home weary. You'll not go back home when a um, kind of uh, tired and worn out in Jesus' name. I will give unto him that is the thirst of the fountain of the water of life. Tell me the last word freely. It is for you tonight in Jesus' name. Uh, Revelation chapter 22 verse 17. Revelation 22 verse 17. Uh, and the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that hear us say, come. And let him that is a thirst come. It says, if you are thirsty tonight for the blessing of God, for the overflowing blessing of the Lord, it says, tonight come, and whosoever will, you see there, whosoever will, I said, is she there? Whosoever will, are you there? Let him take of the water of life freely. Take of the water of life freely. Number one is the panting and the passion. But then 
you have to pray and praise the Lord. You need to open your heart, open your vessel, open your mouth wide before you will feel it. That makes us to point number two in Psalm 42. Psalm 42, we're reading from verses 4 and 5. Psalm 42, verses 4 and 5. When I remember these things, I pour out my soul in me. You cannot pour out your soul with the lid on the, on the, on the vessel, with the cover on the vessel. You have to remove the cover. You cannot seal your mouth, close your mouth, and then pour out your soul. You have to open your mouth. I pour out my soul in me. For I had gone with the multitude. I went with them to the house of God. You know, many people do not understand the house of God is the house of prayer. The house of God is where we come to pour out our body, pour out our sorrow, pour out our thirst, pour out our desires. He say, I pour out my soul. As I've gone with the multitude, I went with them to the house of God. With my voice, with the voice of joy and praise, and with the multitude, I kept the holy day, not holiday, the holy day. The people that take the holy day as a holiday, they won't come to church. For them, it's holiday. It's for picnic. It's for photographs. Is for the beach, is for whatever. But it says, because I have a need and I want to pour out my soul, I want to seek the Lord. I take that day as a holy day. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? Hope thou in God as you come to the house of God, like you have come today. Your hope will be realized. Hope thou in God, for I shall yet praise him. The devil wants me to stop praising him. I shall yet praise him. The problems come so that I can stop praising him. I shall yet praise him. The doubts come so that I will not have the answer to my prayer, but I will have the answer to my prayer. You will have the answer to your prayer. I will yet praise him for the help of his countenance. Look at verse 8. Yet the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime. Today. In the daytime. And in the night his song shall be with me and my prayer unto the God of my life. The prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Psalm 62. We're looking at verse 8. Psalm 62, verse 8. Trust in Him at all times. Trust in Him at all times. Trust in Him. Tell me. When you are sad, trust in Him. When you are sick, trust in Him. When you feel dry, trust in him. When you are at a crossroad, trust in him. When it appears things are upside down in the family, trust in him. Everything will come the right side up in Jesus' name. Trust in him at all times. The ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. For me, God is a refuge. He will not fail you. He will not fail me. He will not fail you when you are in trouble. He will answer your prayer. From tonight and every day as you pour out your soul in prayer, as you pour out your soul in praise, while you are praying and praising the Lord, the answers will come down from heaven. He will not deny you. You will not be denied. Psalm 46, verse 1. 
Psalm 46, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Read that again. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Read that again now. God is my refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. No trouble will drown you. You will not stop this journey halfway. The reason God has called you is going to fulfill in Jesus' name. Only pray, only praise the Lord and trust Him with your soul. And your answer will come in Jesus' name. Verse 2, therefore, will not we fear? Any person afraid there? Therefore, will we not fear? I said, anybody afraid there? Some people, are, they are afraid of this, our country. Are you afraid? Some people are afraid of the powers of the air, principalities and powers. Are you afraid? Some people are afraid in the day, afraid in the night. Are you afraid? Some people are afraid of the economy. Are you afraid? Some people, they have jobs and they have everything, you know, but they're still afraid. They're still afraid. It says, therefore, will we not fear? Therefore, shall I not fear? I didn't hear you. Let the heavens hear you. Let even the devil hear you. Therefore, will we not fear as a church? We're not afraid. The future of the church is in the hand of the Almighty God. Our present dominion is in the hand of the Almighty God. Therefore, will we not fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, whatever we hear, whatever we see, whatever we feel, whatever people are spreading, all the rumors, we will not fear. Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof, shall make glad the city of God, we shall be glad. The holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High, God is of the midst of her. Is God there with you? I said, is God there with you? God, the Savior, is he there? The strengthener, is he there? The healer, is he there? The Redeemer, you see there, God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her. God shall help you. God shall help us. Tell me the rest. Tell me the rest. Say it, say it. Let me hear you. God will not be late on your case. God will not be late as you pray and as you praise the Lord right early in time. The blessing will come upon you in Jesus' name. Second Chronicles chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. I'm reading from verse 3. Second Chronicles 20 verse 3 And Jehoshaphat feared You've gone beyond that level now I said you've gone beyond that level now And Jehoshaphat feared But you will not fear And set himself to seek the Lord And proclaimed a fast Throughout all Judah And then we come to verse 12 Verse 12, it says, Oh, our God, you see this, pouring out his soul. In time of trouble, in time of danger, in time of insecurity, 
in time of sickness, in time of perplexity, in time of poverty, in time of joblessness, when you pour out your soul, everything will turn around. Oh, our God, that will thou not judge them? For we have no might against this great company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. We are longing after him, our eyes are upon thee. We are panting after him, our eyes are upon thee. Will he answer your prayer? Verse 20, verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe in the Lord your God. This is the person who was afraid in verse 3. And now in verse 20, believe in the Lord your God. So shall ye be established. Believe his prophets. So shall ye prosper. Anybody believing the man of God, the word of God that he speaks there today? Where are you? You are prospered already. Yeah. You are delivered already. Yeah. That problem is over. Verse 21, and when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singers unto the Lord that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and to say, praise the Lord. Somebody shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Somebody shall praise the Lord. While the Ammonites are still preparing to fight against you, somebody shall praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. While the Moabites are still on their way and they are bragging, I will finish him. I will finish her. Somebody praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. While it appears your body is still telling another story, I am sick, I am weak, I don't know, I'm feeling somebody shall praise the Lord. Praise he says, praise the Lord for his mercy and endureth for how long? The mercy of the Lord will be upon you forever. From now, from henceforth till forever, mercy, mercy, and mercy upon your life in Jesus' name. Verse 22, and when they began to sing, and when they began to sing, problem will not take the song out of your mouth. Sickness will not take the song out of your mouth. And all the sorrow and the sadness and the complaints of the world will not take the song out of your mouth in Jesus' name. And to praise the Lord saints and pushments against the children of Ammon, Moab, Mount Seir, which were come against Judah. Tell me. I said, tell me about your enemies. Tell me about your oppressors. Tell me about the people that want to destroy you. Tell me about what you were afraid of yesterday. And they were smitten. I rejoice with you. Congratulations. I say congratulations. Your battle is over. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Seir, utterly to slay and to destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, every one of your enemies helped to destroy another. And when Judah came towards the watchtower in the wilderness, they looked unto the multitude, and behold, what am I seeing here? And behold, and behold, there were dead bodies falling to the earth, and none escaped. 
No, no, escape. You will sing again. You will shout again. You will praise the Lord again. Psalm 40, Psalm 40, we're reading from verse 3. Psalm 40, verse 3. And he has put a new song in my mouth. I said, he has put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. Many shall see it. I see you singing. Many shall see it. I see you rejoicing. Many shall see it. I see you testifying. And fear and they shall trust in the Lord. Because of what God will do in your life, many will trust in the Lord. What God will do on your child, many will trust in the Lord. What God will do on your daughter-in-law, your son-in-law, many will trust in the Lord because of you. What God will do on your daddy, on your mommy, many will rejoice and they trust in the Lord in Jesus' name. They thought everything was over, but we are starting life all over again. Verse 4, blessed is that man that maketh the Lord his trust, and respected not the proud, and uh, nor such as turn aside to lies. Many, O oh Lord, my God, are thy wonderful works which thou hast done. And thy thoughts, which are towards us, towards what, they cannot be reckoned up in order unto thee. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Your miracles, innumerable. Outcome of your prayer, innumerable. Exploits in your life innumerable. You begin to see great manifestation of power from today that you have ever seen in your life. Isaiah chapter 50. Isaiah chapter 50. I'm reading from verse 10. Who is among you that fears the Lord, that obeys the voice of his servant? That, that walketh in darkness, that has no light. Let him trust in the name of the Lord and stay upon his God because things are going to be different from now on. Romans chapter 4. Romans chapter 4. I'm reading from verse. 18. Romans chapter 4, verse 18. Who against hope believes in hope. There's nothing hopeless in your life. Nothing hopeless in your family. Nothing hopeless about your loved ones. You have, uh, you know, somebody overseas and you have somebody far away and they're sending letters, they're sending SOS, help our soul. They say, I'm going through this and that tonight. Right back to them, things have changed. Because nothing hopeless in your extended family again in Jesus' name. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall thy seed be. Barrenness is cancelled. And be not weak in faith. He considered not his own body now dead when he was about an hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. No more staggering. I said, No more staggering, no more unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded. Any fully persuaded person here today and be fully persuaded that what he had promised, tell me, what he had promised, what he had promised, 
was able also to perform. Today is a day of performance. Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. The prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. The prayer and the praise of a trusting soul. Who am I talking about? I'm talking about you. You'll pray and you'll praise the Lord. Look at what will happen. Acts chapter 16, verse 25. And at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed and sang praises, prayer and praise unto God. And the prisoners had them. And tell me, tell me how your problem will vanish away. Tell me how the joy will come. Tell me how your body will be rolled away. Tell me how your body will be healed. Tell me how the oppression will vanish away. Tell me how the demon's power will be broken. Tell me how the job will come. And suddenly there was a great earthquake. Amen. So that the foundations of your prison are shaking. And immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands on that side, on this side, on that side, over there, everywhere, everyone's bands, my brother, everyone's bands, my sister, everyone's bands, my boy, my girl, everyone's bands what loose thank god today is the day yeah. we're coming to point number three now and we're coming to psalm 42 psalm 42 i'm reading from verse 6 psalm 42 we're looking at verse 6 the priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul the priority and the pursuit of a transformed soul. Verse 6 and 42. Oh my God, my soul is cast down within me. Therefore will I remember thee from the land of Jordan and of the Hammonites and from the hill of Mizza. Verse 11. Why hast thou, hast thou cast down, O my soul, why art thou disquieted within me? Hope in God. My brother, are you there? Hope in God. Dear sister, are you there? Answer me now. Hope in God. Those problems you see today, you'll see them no more in Jesus' name. For I, for I, somebody, for I, Somebody for I say it, for I shall yet praise him. Why, why am I losing your voice? I shall yet praise him. Who is the health of my countenance and my God? Your time has now come. I said your time has now come. It's a priority. It's a pursuit. Look at Matthew chapter 6. And I'm reading from verse 31. Matthew chapter 6, verse 31. Therefore, take no thought, no anxiety tonight, no worry tonight, no palpitation of the heart tonight, Give me good, good, amen. No perplexity tonight. No confusion tonight. Therefore, take no thought. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that she have need of all these things. Amen. 
But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And tell me, put your name there and tell me all. I said, put your name there and all. All these things shall be added unto you. All. All. Somebody shout all. all. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. Romans chapter 8 verse 32. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all. For us all. How many people? For us all. For how many people? For us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Freely give us, tell me, all things. Tonight is your night. Such John, third epistle of John, I'm reading from verse 2. Third epistle of John, verse 2. Beloved, any beloved child of God here today? Beloved, beloved brother, beloved sister, beloved child, beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper. Look at him, that's talking about me. I said, it's talking about me. It's talking about me that thou mayest prosper. Amen. Amen. And be in health. Amen. 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 Even as thy soul prospereth, you will prosper in everything you do. Amen. Your health will come back to the optimum again in Jesus' name. Amen. And your soul will prosper in Jesus' name. As we seek the Lord, we're going to find the blessing of the Lord. Your soul should not be cast down. Your soul should not be weary. You should not be tired of the journey. You should not think that anything is over. Nothing is over. We're starting afresh. New strength. New power. New courage. New blessing. Healing in your body. Strength in your soul. Power in your spirit prosperity on your job and the work of God will prosper in your hand in Jesus name let's rise up today today is the day of blessing today is a day of seeking after the Lord open your mouth and the Lord said he will fill up your mouth open up your mouth open your mouth and the Lord says I will fill you with blessing tell the Lord tell the Lord tell the Lord tell your soul not to be perplexed. Tell your soul not to be worried. Tell your soul not to be anxious. Tell your soul not to be hopeless. Tell your soul not to give up and say, Lord, I'm here today. Today is the day of my blessing. Today is the day of my turning around. Today is the day it will wipe out all my tears. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. Open your mouth wide and I will feel it. My heart is panting. My heart is longing. My heart is desiring. My heart is after something. I must be blessed today. I must be blessed today. Wilderness experience is over. Desert experience is over. Hopelessness is over. Sadness is over. Here is your day, the day of blessing. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide. And I will feel it. He brought water out of the rock. He'll bring honey out of the rock for you. He'll bring blessing out of the rock for you. That rock is Christ. Happiness in him. Joy in him. 
revival in him, refreshing in him, power in him, authority in him, healing in him, deliverance in him, hope thou in God. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had watched in my ways. As your son have subdued their enemies. The Ammonites will conquer themselves. The Moabites will conquer themselves. Your enemies will conquer themselves. He will turn his mighty hand against your adversary. And the haters of the Lord shall have, this, shall have submitted themselves. They shall have fed them also for the finest of wheat. I was honey out of the rock. Honey out of the rock. Honey out of the rock. Would I have satisfied them? Tonight is the night of your satisfaction. Disappointment is gone. Discouragement is gone. Tiredness is gone. Weariness is gone. All your doubts are gone. He answers every prayer tonight. He answers every prayer tonight. He will not forget you. He will not forsake you. Why art thou cast down, O my soul? Hope thou in God. Hope thou in God. Why shall yet praise him? I shall yet praise him. In the hells of my countenance, he is my God. He is your God. He is my God. He has answered your prayer. He has answered your prayer. Now praise him. Now praise him. Now praise him. Offer him praise. Give him praise. He cannot fail, praise him. He has answered, praise him. He has delivered you, praise him. He has healed you, praise him. He has crushed the enemy, praise him. He has taken your fears away, praise him. He has set you free, praise him. He has given you a new vision, praise him. A new power, praise him. A new vitality, praise him. The Lord is on your side, praise him. Now you're making the priority of your life. The pursuit of your life. the center of your life. And you know you are special, special in the sight of the Lord, beloved, 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 beloved. Your soul will prosper your body will be healthy and everything you set your hand upon will prosper. Praise him. 
and make him the priority and the pursuit of your life. Thank him, thank him, thank him. Give on unto him. Exalt him. Magnify him. Praise him. In Jesus' name we pray. And the victorious people of God said, And the hopeful people of God said, And the delivered people of God said, The Lord has answered your prayer. A new strength in your life. From today, you'll go from strength to strength in Jesus' name. Righteousness in your life. Power in your life. Courage in your life. Authority in your life. Victory in your life. It is confirmed in Jesus' name. Raise up your hand for your victory. From tonight, you are more than a conqueror. I said you are more than a conqueror. Victory from now all the way in Jesus' name. Authority of the believer in your life from now on in Jesus' name. Power. I said power. Passion. Authority. Answered prayer joy he will do it through your life and in your life in jesus name father in the name of jesus we thank you for the special place you have placed every believer here tonight and i thank you for the victory thank you for the joy thank you for the power thank you for the breakthrough I pray for every brother and every sister, every promise we've had of today be fulfilled in every life in Jesus' name. Discouragement gone. Disappointment gone. All that pressure, all that opposition gone in Jesus' name. The pain of persecution totally squashed and totally crushed and de totally destroyed in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, every dry ground will become rivers of living water. Let, be, let there be refreshing in every life, revival in every life, renewal in every life. And I pray, Lord, all the, all the thirsty, all those who are thirsty for your righteousness, fill them up with righteousness in Jesus' name. All those who are thirsty for Holy Ghost power, I pray that your power will come from the throne of God, come upon them in Jesus' name. Tiredness, gone. Weariness, gone. Lukewarmness gone. Lethargy all gone. Coldness all gone. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost burn in every heart in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who have missed miracles, miracles, miracles. Every time they have prayed, they have fasted. They have had other pray for them, and yet what they were looking for, they didn't get today. 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 
is the day of their answered prayer in Jesus' name. Give them the miracle they need. Give them the blessing they need. And I pray, Lord, this blessing will continue. This power will continue. Everybody, without exception, will have a testimony in Jesus' name. We know you have answered. We know you have done it. Give a new song to every believer. We thank you because we know it is done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.